So now this time we will uh, have our tag state of the guard uh, remarks, and then we'll finish out with the rest of our administrative uh, nuggets. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Can everybody hear me? Uh, all right. The uh, so I, we've been sitting down and talking a long time, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot. Uh, I will be glad to ask any questions anybody has, and um, and so I'd rather this be a conversation than than me just standing up here talking. I, I will start with um, because of you, um, it is easy for me to do my job, and and, uh, and I am very honored and humbled to uh, be able to represent you at the national level. And I hope that you have seen from some of the comments made this morning um, by General Robinson and uh, Nagus, uh, General Anderson. Um, General Anderson is a huge fan of Georgia National Guard because the 48th worked for him over in um, Afghanistan. And Randall and Sergeant Major Lewis and you know, he's seen what right looks like, and he's seen the goodness of the Georgia Guard, and that's why he's fired up about the Georgia Guard, not because of anything anybody's, you know, obviously, uh, JRTC rotation has been successful, and, um, and, and he's proud of that and that kind of thing, but he's lived it downrange with us, and that's why he's excited about the Georgia Guard. And so I, I share that with you to, to um, I guess, reiterate that we have a great reputation at the national level, um, and uh, and that just that's just Army that I'm talking about. But I mean, you know, the air um, continues to do great work, and even um, outside of mobilizations, outside of the normal things that we do and what we're paid to do. Um, but I will tell you that um, everybody from General Ingell on down um, was very proud of the work that the 165th did uh, with respect to responding to the Puerto Rican C-130 crash down there, and and that. Y'all don't realize what that, uh, what effort, um, what effort was needed to respond to that. Um, but it was not just going out and looking at the crash site. That um, site had to be secured 24/7. Um, there was a lot of other things that had to be done with respect to coordinating with agencies that came in to investigate, pick up the pieces, et cetera, et cetera, and, and it went on and on. And so for at least uh, one week. Uh, it was after that accident, it was everybody down there. And then after that, it was mainly security forces and, and I guess, support uh, in a little bit separate way. Uh, but yeoman's work by everybody that involved and in, in, uh, Puerto Rico invited some of our 165th down for the, the memorial ceremony they had in Puerto Rico for that. Um, the, a lot of you don't know, I, I hope you were paying attention, but when uh, Congressman Bishop uh, spoke, th this uh, individual readiness training or Innovative readiness training, I think is what it's called, that, that took place down in Savannah. Uh, again, the 165th sponsored that. Uh, you know, there was, I can't remember how many people were served, but over a period of time, it, essentially, we sponsored it, the 165th medical folks, but it brought in reservists from all branches, uh, active duty medical folks from all branches, and, and they um, stood up, a, um, I think, four or five different sites down there and open the doors, and anybody that needed medical service could walk in. And to include veterinarians were there, you could bring your dogs in, or pets in, not just dogs. And uh, so uh, there were families that came down with, you know, four or five kids, and, and all of them left with eyeglasses, and they'd never had glasses before. And uh, so all those kind of things uh, are just, um, it's you know, stuff we do on the periphery, uh, much less our warfighting mission. And, uh, and the 165th just got back in January, February from being mobilized. And y'all know what the J-STARS does on a daily basis. They're always, the sun never sets on a J-STARS that's mobilized. So, um, so I just, uh, I could go on and on about all the goodness that, uh, that we're doing as an organization. And, uh, and you saw our Youth Challenge uh, um, cadets this morning. Um, we're, we're up to 16,000 graduates in that program since it was um, uh, started in 1993, and uh, that's 16,000 um, students that were going down the wrong path that now um, have accomplished something in life and, uh, and, and um, know what right looks like, understand what discipline and hard work do for them and those type of things. Um, much less our star base that, that gets, um, helps fifth graders 
with STEM projects here in, in the metro area. So I could go on and on and talking about the goodness. I, I, there are some things that I think General Anderson mentioned that uh, I don't know that uh, everybody knows about. Cross-functional teams are, is what the Army is using to really reduce the um, amount of time it takes to field new systems. And so there's six cross-functional teams. Um, he kind of he asked the question if everybody knew what he was talking about, that kind of thing. I will tell you that we do know what he's talking about. Um, General Simmons and I went down to Fort Benning, which is the soldier lethality cross-functional team, and, uh, and met with a leader of that. And, and they have offered for us to, uh, they're looking for National Guardsmen to participate in each one of those teams. And so we've, we're looking to try to um, position some of our company grade uh, officers and NCOs into some of those teams if, if, uh, if anybody's interested in doing that. So, uh, so we are paying attention to that and, and are tied into that. I think, uh, I think that was the note I, I wanted to bring up from what he was, was speaking about. Um, but the Army's doing all kinds of, of things like that, that to try to make our formation more lethal and, and get after the, the systems that we need to be competitive on the battlefield. So, uh, and then uh, somebody asked me uh, about J-STARS. Um, a lot of you, you know, if you're paying attention, uh, I think the magazine that, that Roy held up this um, morning, uh, this month, it's one of the past, uh, maybe the current issue of our Nagus magazine has a little article about J-STARS. Um, so the Air Force wants to stand down J Stars and not recapitalize, which means um, recapitalize is their talk of putting, making a new platform. And uh, our frustration is that we were supposed to recap about two or three years ago. Um, the Air Force has been kicking it to the right, and now they're saying they don't want to do it. It's old, antiquated, and we want to come up with a new system, um, a system of systems to replace the J Stars and what it brings to the battlefield. Um, but the problem we have is they don't have that system developed right now. So, um, so there's, there's a gap there. We're concerned about that. Um, our legislators are working very hard. Congressman Scott, a member of the House Armed Service Committee, and then Senator Perdue sits on the Senate Armed Service Committee, and, uh, and Senator Isaacson are, are, are both, uh, are all three working it hard on um, the House version of NDAA um, that was signed, I guess, two or three weeks ago. Uh, or passed two or three weeks ago, it has kept some language in there to keep the Air Force from standing down J-STARS. And, uh, and so that was strong language. The language on the Senate side, we're not sure because as uh, Mr. Robinson said, it's still sequestered and we don't know exactly what it says, but it's not as strong. Um, Senator Perdue's uh, MLA told me that it's not going to be as strong as the Air or the House side, but we're going to continue to work that. So. Um, for me to stand up here, I, I can't tell you what the future of J-STARS is. Uh, um, we're going to continue to work for our airmen to ensure that we keep a, uh, a wing down at Warner Robins, and, uh, and it's something that, that is worthwhile and it's a good mission, um, but I really can't speak to that uh, any more than that for now. So uh, um, just know that there are a lot of people. I, I will tell you that <laughs> um, Congressman Scott, uh, my phone rang, um, I guess, Thursday afternoon. And uh, he said, uh, hey, has uh, General Rice called you yet? And I said, or has, uh, I guess, the Air Force called you yet? And I said, no, uh, no sir, but I understand that um, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow to talk about it. And he said, well, the Secretary of the Air Force just called me, and this is what she told me. So um, he is all over it and working it hard, and, and we will continue to do that. So, so I'll, I'll stop there, and let me ask anybody got any questions. And that light is bright. Nobody's got any questions. Come on now. Nobody's got a single question. That means we're everybody is excited as they can be to member, be a member of the Georgia Guard and happy. And the, uh, all right, the, and you're ready to get out the pool and let your kids run around and swim a little bit. So, all right. Well, I'm that's fine by me because I'm ready to get out there with you. Um, it, it it makes me feel good about the organization when I see uh, all of the starting on Thursday night. Some of you get here early. Um, the golf tournament yesterday. Last night, really, I really enjoy in this room, people getting together, having conversations, spending time together, going down the hospitality room and really enjoying each other's company And because we don't get to see each other often enough. And so uh, that really makes me feel good about things. And so I appreciate all of you that come. We do have to make sure that our younger generation knows a, a little bit more about, or not a little bit, but a lot more about 
this organization when it does for us because I tell you, uh, we're only as strong as uh, our strength in numbers. And so please, uh, you know, we got to give everybody an opportunity to understand what this organization does for us um, and then uh, to join if they want to. So with that, I'll be, get out, I'll exit stage left and turn it back over to Reg. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it.